rise for our opening hymn. At this time, I invite Elise and Lorna Anzalone forward to lead us in lighting our Christ candle. Good evening. On Christmas Eve, we celebrate the hope of the prophets. The peace of God's kingdom. The joy of good news. And the love of God's own son. Tonight, we like the candle of Christ coming into our world. Please join me in a call to response. From the darkness of creation, God brought forth light. 
The light flooded over the waters of creation, sparkling, dancing. In the wilderness of Egypt, God sent forth a leading pillar of light. That light directed people to move on the path of freedom. For the cries of the people, God offered the lights of hope. The lights of God's presence. And the most unlikely of places to the most unlikely of people, God's light was born in a child. The true light, which enlightens everyone, is coming into our world. Please join in a moment of silence and prayer. A candle burns, the sign of Emmanuel, God among us, born as one of us. May we light the light presence, the light who gives life to people. Amen. Good evening and welcome to our service of lessons and carols this Christmas Eve here at Bon Air Presbyterian Church. We're so grateful to have you with us, whether you are worshiping in person or joining us online. This is one of my favorite services for the year. And a big reason is that this service is not so much led by me, but by you all, by your voices, by your presence, by your spirit of joy and of love that you all tell the story this evening through song, through, uh, through reading of scripture, through lighting candles and through joining together in hope and in love. I'm so grateful to get to be here with you all this evening. As you might tell from our bulletin this evening, everything you need for our service is in that bulletin, including all the words for our songs. We hope this makes it very easy to follow along um, to everything. And as you also will notice that every part of it grows for the story of Christmas, starting with the prophets of the Hebrew scripture, telling uh, expressing the longing of all people to know God, to see God's grace and love and God responding and saying that God is not done yet. And then the great news that God is bringing a child that will show us truly who God is. As we hear this story, I invite you to sing out loud, to meditate upon the words and to know that Christ is present with us this evening. I also want to invite you, if you're able, to please join us tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for our Christmas morning service. We would love to have you. It'll be a very relaxed service with communion, shared lots of songs as well at that service. And I'm going to invite you. I know you all are looking great tonight, uh, very well dressed. If you would like to come tomorrow, come however you feel most celebratory and joyful whether that's as a suit, whether that's your favorite Christmas pajamas, whether it's a very bright bright blazer that your wife doesn't let you wear except for Christmas morning, Henry. We invite you to come and join us and celebrate with joy. Finally, the last thing I wanna mention for this evening is that we have a special offering for tonight. Our offering for tonight goes to two great and very needed ministries. As we are gathered here in person on this very chilly night, we remember those who don't have a safe and warm place, who, who don't have all the basic needs. And so our offering for tonight goes to our discretionary fund here as the church, as we have people come into the building during the week in need of some extra help in different ways from, uh, from stays overnight to gas to food. And it also goes to serve a great ministry that you may not know about, but I, I definitely want to share with you about, and that is Axe RVA. Axe RVA, we, we, when people come in, we can help them maybe for a day or two. The Axe RVA can really help them for months. The Axe RVA works with congregations all across the city, gathering in uh, not just monetary resources, but wisdom resources too. And so when people are in need, when 
uh, electricity is about to be turned off, when they can't know where the next month's rent is going to go to, when everything, um, when it just seems really hard, the XRVA is who they will get to connect with and, uh, and, and really give great resources, not just money, but ways that they may not know of help that's already here in Richmond and Chesterfield County. And so I very much uh, highly encourage you to start off our service by shining our light of love and care through our offering to the discretionary fund and ACTS RVA. Thank you all so very much.
God is sending a shepherd from Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrata, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be one of peace. Those who walk in darkness will see great a great light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there shall be an endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
God chooses to forgive God's children. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to the idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zebulun? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim, for I am God and no mortal. The Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt and like doves from the land of Assyria. And I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. Kingdom of peace be led by a child. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them.
An angel appears to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. An angel appears to Joseph. Now the birth, birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us.
Jesus is born. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their hometowns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee of Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Good news of great joy for all the people. Now, in that same region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen just as it had been told them.
in our weary world today. There is still darkness, there is still cold, there is still longing for love, for peace, for connection, and most of all, for light. This evening, we rejoice and we celebrate and we help to witness that God's light is still alive in our world, that God loved each and every one of us so much that God came to earth to dwell as one of us, to take on our very flesh and bone, to show us how much we are loved and how much God will never, ever leave our sides. So at this time, I invite us to share and pass in the light of Christ, passing it to each of our neighbors. And as you do so and join in our next song, I invite you to hold that light high, knowing that nothing can ever cast out that light. It will shine and shine.
in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through him. Without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son full of grace and truth. Friends, the light has come into this world. God's love has broken into our creation and God's love continues to dwell here. As we go out this evening, may we share that light of Christ. May we share it with hugs, with gifts, with dinners, with phone calls and cards. May we share it with service. May we share it in acts of charity. May we share it in all the ways we see in our neighbor and our stranger, God's own beloved children, who whatever their story or journey has been, are continued to be deeply loved by God. May we carry on that light. May we be, bear witness to that truth, that all of God's children are dearly loved and that none are fully alone. May we be people of light. At this time, I invite us to blow out our candles, but as we do so, know that that light of Christ continues to dwell inside each and every one of us as we celebrate Christmas and in the days, weeks, months, and years to come. Go out this evening, friends. Go out with hope. Go out with peace. Go out with joy. Go out with love. 
go out knowing that Christ is not just here in these walls and this building, that Christ is out there in the world, that Christ continues to be at work in our world for mercy, for justice, for freeing the oppressed, for lifting up the lonely, for bringing all of God's children care and presence and love this season. May we go out into that world knowing that we will meet Christ and friends and neighbors and strangers and people who move down the street. And may we also know that Christ's light will be alive in us. And that as we go out as people, that we will get to go and serve and be bearers of Christ's light, full of love, full of justice, full of mercy and hope for a weary world. Go out, friends, and know that the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are with you this night and every day. Merry Christmas to you all.